Hello everyone, my name is Morgan Baker and I'm an accessibility lead and game designer for The Odd Gentleman. And I'm going to do a very quick crash course, what is deaf accessibility? Let's just dive right in. What is deafness? It can range from mild to moderate to severe to profound. Hearing bias leads us to assume that all deaf people cannot hear, but deafness is indeed a spectrum like most disabilities, and therefore it has a range. Deafness is made up of many variables, including pitch, whether it be high like a bird's chirp or low like a dog's bark, and loudness, such as the difference between a person quietly whispering and an airplane's engines roaring. Between the variance in audiograms, along with the vastness of personal experiences, there is no such thing as one single deaf and hard of hearing experience. Everyone is going to be a little bit different. For example, some people may use an assistive medical device, some may be oral, others use sign language, or a mixture of them all. We all access technology, society, and the hearing world a little differently. Should you ever be involving a deaf player, consultant, or developer in your process, be sure to connect with them to see what communication method works best for them. Be prepared to be flexible and allow them to decide what accessibility would be best for them in your process. What is deaf accessibility then? Well, deaf accessibility is a concept of designing with deaf and hard of hearing people in mind, or DHH people. Deaf accessibility is a little more narrow than hearing accessibility, which incorporates cognitive and neurodiverse experiences, and that's a talk for another day. Today, we are specifically talking about DHH players. Unsurprisingly, the functional limitations for DHH players typically lie in the auditory aspect of game design and user experience, and there's also this added effect that though DHH players may have a sense for sound, they do not experience what I call hearing biased. For example, I'm constantly surprised that water makes a sound and that the sound is inconsistent between water sources. So what do we do to make games accessible to DHH players then with all this in mind? Deaf accessibility typically comes in three forms with a bonus, subtitles and closed captions, visual cues with UX UI, alternative communication, and our bonus haptics. Let's discuss the former first. We are all more or less familiar with subtitles and closed captions, and it's critical for DHH experiences. I've listed some basic tips here, including making sure all dialogue is subtitled, label speakers and their location, Keep text to 40 characters per line with two lines per display. Keep text in a static location and make sure text contrasts well using proper font letterboxing and mixed case. Most importantly, let players customize subtitles and closed captions, please. We all have individual needs and therefore customization is the key to deaf and hard of hearing success. This is also why it's crucial to have deaf gamers involved in your research and design process, if possible, of course. Doing so will allow you to optimize the design and user experience to best serve DHH gamers of all experiences, abilities, and backgrounds. Moving on to visual cues in UX UI, all pertinent audio should have corresponding visuals. We can do this using UX UI HUD magic, uh, depending on the game you are making. For example, we have an arrow pointing to the direction with a text description explosion to our right. Players particularly like iconology over excessive text, so instead of having a text grenade or explosion with an arrow, we can also use an icon of a grenade with directionality. We can also make it a core part of our UX UI, it just depends on what you're making, but bake in the accessibility. And don't forget that hearing bias does exist. To many of us who don't experience sound every day, there will be some things that don't necessarily make sense or are not really intuitive. I've had games where I've had no idea that the dev meant by loot tinkering or something like that. There's a lot of examples. What may be intuitive to hearing developers may not always be intuitive to deaf and hard of hearing players. Hence why it's important to test specifically with DHH players and consult with experts in deaf accessibility early and often. Let's move on to alternative communication. Hearing bias will make us assume that all deaf and hard of hearing players cannot speak, but as we've learned, that may not always be true. Therefore, we want to offer alternative communication methods, especially in multiplayer games. This can include a ping system, text chat, speech to text transcriptions, and so on. And it's always best to bake this speech accessibility for deaf and hard of hearing players as much as possible. 
Our bonus is haptics, the idea of using rumble to indicate audio cues or other pertinent gameplay information. Haptics are just great, as DHH players can utilize the sense of touch to better access gameplay. However, haptics are currently supplemental as they're not really available in all forms of gaming and technology can be limiting, even with advanced hardware like a haptic vest, which can cost more than an actual console, software is not always in depth or available to a wider range of devs. I keep haptics as more of a bonus than a core accessible option at this time, but who knows what the future holds. If you do include haptics, make sure to include multiple options such as a slider controller, the strength, or uh, haptic presets. That has been your quick rundown of deaf and hard of hearing accessibility. Additional resources include Microsoft Xbox Accessibility Guidelines, GamesAccessibilityGuidelines.com, and my website, which goes into more deaf, LahiBaker.com. If you have questions, feel free to connect with me. My email is momoxmia at gmail.com. My Twitter handle is at momoxmia. You can also find me on LinkedIn at Leahy Baker or my website, leahybaker.com. Thank you so much and take care. All this is possible thanks to our sponsors, Playtus Cloud, Play Your Research, Balsamic, Adobe, the book, How to Be a Games User Researcher, UX is Fine, Antidote, and Sketch.